Hello everyone, welcome to the Violin Podcast YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed already, make sure to click subscribe. Um, we have a bunch of videos coming out every week in terms of uh, DIY videos, uh, violin tutorial videos, and also weekly deals. We also do interviews bi-weekly, so make sure you click on any of the podcast platforms down below. We also have uh, some episodes in uh, the YouTube channel, so go ahead and click those out. So today I'm going to teach you a basic step-by-step -step on how to hold your violin. Here we go. So I want to begin by just telling you that humans were not meant to hold a violin on their shoulder. But you know, the violin's been around for hundreds of years and the violin has had this uh, development in how we hold the violin. We've developed a shoulder rest, we've developed a chin rest, which is what you see right here if you're a beginner uh, learning how to play the violin. But the number one thing, the first tip that I would give you um, in terms of holding your violin, you have to have good posture. So normally when I teach my beginners, I usually ask them to have a strong stomach, you know, relaxed shoulders, because posture is the number one thing when you're about to begin your journey with the violin, as well as learning how to hold the violin. Second tip that I would give you is make sure that your violin is the right side. You know, I happen to have very lengthy arms so the violin for a full this is a full-size violin for anyone who's interested my arm goes all the way out if you can see right so of course you know i you can say that i have viola arms but that's maybe for another video why i'm not playing viola making sure that you have the right violin is crucial because if you're a beginner and you have a violin that's bigger than what you're supposed to have then you're going to struggle a lot with keeping a posture a lot of times students will slouch with their left shoulder and they'll lift their sh left shoulder up or they'll slouch and their violin will come at an angle which will affect their point of contact with the bow which will be in another video hopefully in the near future. Third tip is to figure out with your teacher if you need a shoulder rest or not. So this is crucial because you know bodies are designed dif differently you know I happen to have a very uh, pronounced collarbone here so for me I'm able to rest my violin on the collarbone and when I usually teach beginners I teach with having them use a sponge because a sponge is not invasive to the body and a lot of times beginners will find that this metal portion of a chin rest really bothers them it irritates them so you don't want to have that happen with a beginner and that kind of turns beginners off in playing the violin because it's a painful experience and of course we don't want them to experience pain when playing the violin that's what this video is all about essentially how to hold the violin on your shoulder so what I like to do is I like to leave a little space right below the shoulder rest where my where my violin can fit snug on my collarbone. I like to think of it as um, a person sitting on a chair. Imagine that the collarbone is the chair and all you need to do is sitting and have the violin sit on the chair. And uh, this shoulder rest could be interpreted as legs or feet where you know if this is the ground and this is the chair. This portion of your upper torso here is the ground and the feet need to touch the ground. So that's one way to make sure that it's nice and snug right over here. Of course, if you're playing with the foam and if you have a student that's five or six years old, then of course this is not gonna be the case. This is specifically towards shoulder, um, having a shoulder rest. Good, so we have the violin on our shoulder. We understand that the violin is supposed to sit snug right over here, okay? Now, we haven't addressed the fact that my head isn't on the chin rest. When you begin your journey with the violin, how to hold the violin, you have to see if you can find that comfort here. And you can do exactly what I'm doing. I'm holding two hands to keep my violin in place so it's not, so it's not gonna fall down. And there are many different ways to teach this. Um, some teachers like to have the nose to scroll ideology. Uh, some violin teachers like to have their violin a little out here for solo posture. I find that I use a combination of both. I like to, I, and according to my playing style, like chamber music or Keschel music, um, the way I hold the violin will be different than I would when I play solo repertoire. So again, have that discussion with your teacher. Now let's address um, how we put our head on the chin rest. So this is our chin rest here. For those of you who uh, don't know, this is our chin rest. This is where 
our jawline actually sits on the chin rest. You know, maybe maybe we can have a conversation down in the comments below to see if we can have an official change instead of chin rest. Maybe we can have like a jaw rest or a head rest. I find that explaining uh, to my students that it's a head rest actually is more effective than a chin rest because if you explain to a beginner who's five or six years old that it's a chin rest, they're gonna do this, right? And you'll see that according to my neck, you'll see a lot of tension and you might find this. Uh, tension building up over time if you don't address it right away. So I like to, again, having a strong stomach, soft, soft shoulders, and making sure that the violin is sitting right here. And your head weighs about eight to nine pounds when you become an adult. So you want to really just relax, relax the back of the neck, back of the head, to see if you can really find that comfort. And once you feel comfortable, see if you can uh, get your hand down and hold the violin with just your head. And I uh, just be careful when you do this. You don't want to be squeezing. Don't squeeze just to have the violin up. You want to have that comfort where your violin is sitting up or when your violin is up right over here and your head is stable. And you might have noticed that I don't get my head all the way down here. You know, I, I have a particularly long neck, so I, when I was young, I had a tendency to go all the way down here. But it's important that your spine is a complete straight line as you put the violin. As I explained to my students, the violin comes to you. You don't come to the violin. So make sure that the violin is always coming to you, that you're nice and relaxed here. And then that covers the, the upper torso of the head part of holding the violin. Well, let's get to um, a very interesting topic here, is how to hold the violin with the left hand. And this is gonna be something where beginners struggle with at first because they're not used to holding uh, the, the neck or the fingerboard. And this is a kind of a new skill that you or someone else that you're teaching, or if you're a parent watching this, this is a very difficult skill to really master, to, to understand the relaxation of the neck and and so on. The violin neck should be sitting right above that knuckle here. And that's where we, that's one way to hold the violin. And this is important because when you're holding your violin for however many hours a day, if you're practicing or if you're a beginner learning, then your neck is gonna get really tired. Um, common phrase that kids like to use is that it hurts, my arm hurts. Um, that could be a sign that there's tension flowing in their arm also that they're, they're not relaxing their neck and that's traveling down their left arm. And again, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. This Great, so if, you're looking, if you look at my hand right over here, this knuckle, as I said, is gonna be the violin shelf. And I like to see, I like to explain to my students this is kind of like a check mark. So they have a visual representation of a check mark. You'll have that check mark go all the way down and also making sure that there's a little bit of space. So you're not doing this. This is, um, this is a different technique. I don't teach this, but uh, there are some people out there that do teach this, but for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go that route. So again, have that check mark, put the violin neck right over here on this first knuckle. Good, and bend your fingers. And one tiny little detail, See if you can get the fingers over the fingerboard so that way they're nice and curvy. I like to say that uh, to all my students, make sure you imagine these little finger boxes, right? This helps you gain strength um, in the violin. Now, another reason why I suggest having the finger shelf right here is because when you have the finger shelf, your violin hand, your, your frame, the knuckles are already above the fingerboard. And this is actually really important because it makes things a whole lot easier for you. Yeah, and you'll have a lot of versatility going up and down the fingerboard. So there you go, that's how you hold the violin. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. We, get, we have weekly deals every Tuesday, and we have violin DIYs, tutorials, interviews, all sorts of things. So make sure to subscribe right over there. And, uh, and thanks for watching.